A friend of mine, we were arguing. Oh, going on and on in this argument. And I was really getting tired of engaging in any kind of discussion that was bleeding in a way that just didn't seem to be very profitable. Tired of the argument, I just took out my notebook one day and I just wrote my name down and I wrote his name down right next to me. And he goes, wait a minute. Why did you do that? What has that got to do with our argument? I said, well, you see like this, we don't have to argue anymore because you see now we're both on the same page. Uh -huh. Great way to end any kind of argument. Everybody getting on the same page. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get the whole world on the same page? Wouldn't that be wonderful if we could get everyone on the same page? But wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get ourselves on the same page? This is what we're really working on today as we're discussing here through this beautiful text that has been offered to us, the journey of working on getting into harmony within our own selves. Because if it's going to start anywhere, it has to start within us. So we want to begin working on getting ourselves on the same page, coming into a wonderful sense of harmony, that meaning a forming a pleasant or pleasing, consistent whole, aligning ourselves, coming into agreement with all aspects within who we are and within our thinking and feeling, pulling it all together, bringing everything into a sense of oneness and creating that harmony that creates a beautiful world. Now, when Scott's on the keyboard and he's playing away, and he plays a couple of keys that are not in line with each other, well, it's not so harmonious. Now, rare is that occasion. He may do that intentional to demonstrate to us what beautiful harmony can sound like when notes are played in beautiful harmony and they, they vibrate their frequency, their tonality matches and blends together so beautifully. So it is what we're working on in our life. The story of our life is how do we get everything to resonate in harmony? How do we get everything to resonate in such a way that there's a, a pleasing continuity, an alignment within our lives, that there's an uh, opportunity for everything to start coming into agreement within our own personal being and who we are? Do you know that you're attracting and inviting and soliciting and creating all kinds of things into your life experience? We do. And we do that through thoughts. Our thoughts are very creative. We talk about that over and over again. Our thoughts create our outlook. Our thoughts are soliciting, inviting, engaging, all kinds of things to come into our life and our world. And what we get is many times is because of our thoughts, but there's something else too. Something that we need to bring in alignment with our thinking, and with our thoughts. Something that, without it being in total harmony, would create a dissonance. Without it being in a sense of alignment and a sense of oneness, there is no beauty or sense of complete fullness. And here's the kicker. It's not only your thoughts, but it's the feelings you've offered in the moments of your life that also draw and create the world that you live in. We're often operating under this misconception that what we get, we get through our actions. And we think it's all about what we do. What we do will bring about things. We don't realize that it always starts first with hmm, that thought we had and then that feeling that we engaged about that thought. Because there's a lot of great things that we can see in our world. That we create. I'm going to create a world of love, but hmm, I'm not so loving maybe my feeling. And I'm a little bit afraid of you and you and you. So my feelings sort of negate that intention and they're not in harmony or in oneness with the thought you express. I want the world to be experiencing all this perfect peace, perfect peace, except for I'm not in peace with you because of what you did to me last night or what you said last week or how you hurt my feelings. And so what it is is constantly that feeling then is not in alignment with the thought that you're expressing. And there's this being pulled in two different directions how difficult it is to live our life in that sense of harmony, the sense of oneness, when thoughts and feelings are not in alignment with one another. Most of our actions that we live out in our life are really trying to compensate for the inappropriate creating that we've done, the inappropriate thoughts that we've done. I'm meaning like how many times have we thought, you know, I'm really afraid, I'm really scared, I'm really stressed, I'm really worried, I'm a sense of lack, I feel separated from the world. <sighs> 
all those feelings, all those thoughts have now created something in our lives. It's our not our actions, but the thoughts and feelings that bring us then to a place. People in a hospital, they're filled with all kinds of people in hospital beds, filled with people taking action to compensate for their inappropriate thoughts of worry and stress and fear that they offered earlier. And now they're trying to correct it through some sort of medical means. You see, their actions got them to this place, and they're trying to compensate for these actions, but really what the actions were the basis of thought and feeling. The thought and feelings brought them to this hospital because our story creates our biology. We may say our biography creates our biology because the story you keep telling, oh, I am so old. Oh, I am so crippled. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. Oh, I'm so... What are you creating in that story? More and more invitation through thought of feeling, you know what? I'm really exhausted. I'm so tired. I, you know, I just picked up a cup of coffee and I set it down and I got to go back to bed because that's exactly what I've created in my world. We create through the bio, our biology, through our biography, through the stories we keep telling ourselves. How about you wake up and say, I'm young, I'm youthful, I am energetic, I'm enthused, I'm accomplishing great things. That's a totally different story, isn't it? And the end result within your body responds totally differently. We know this as we've studied within our classes at Emerson Institute. The scientific studies that have transpired in our world today where scientists have looked at a bottle of water and loved it. That's right, saying loving things to that water for over 30 days. I love you. You're beautiful. You're amazing. And then when they looked under the microscope, they looked at the crystals and how beautifully formed they were. Then taking a similar bottle of water and for 30 days spending time saying, I hate you, you're ugly, you're useless, you're, you're useless, you have no importance in this world. I don't even know why you exist. And that kind of anger, hatred. When looking at the water crystals after 30 days, they're jagged and formed in a crazy and ununiform way. What do we learn? What we learn is that the story we tell ourselves affects our body. The story you're telling yourself affects your feelings. And then your feelings create all of these circumstances that you, you're living out. So what if, what if, what if we brought our thoughts and our feelings together in such wonderful harmony that we began to create success, prosperity, and blessing within the journey of our lives? You see, the scripture says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Great things are accomplished, not so much by our actions, through the things that we want to labor in, the things that we want to toil with, through our physical power. It's not through our might and our strength or our lack of strength, but it's by the spirit within. And that spirit within is that wonderful thought and feeling that we marry together, that we bring together in perfect harmony, that really comes together in beauty. I love it that in life, we have an indicator light that goes on. Now, I actually wish that we had that in every car, an indicator light. Oh, wait, wait, we do. It's called a turn signal. Oh, that's what that thing is that nobody seems to use in Atlanta. Yeah, it's an indicator light. It indicates I intend to go left sometimes, but... My prerogative says I'm going to turn right. Uh, but, you know, it's an indicator light that you turn on, right? Well, in life, the indicator light goes on automatically. Now, I wish we had that in our cars, but how beautiful that's there in our life. You see, every thought evokes a feeling response within you, and it serves as an indicator of what you're attracting. Every thought evokes a response, a feeling. A thought. Oh, I said, I love that tie. And he likes the tie. Oh, I look good in that tie. It invokes a feeling. Suddenly, Alan feels all kinds of feelings of like, wow, maybe I look good today. Wow, I didn't know I'd be, you know, I'm looking pretty good. You know, all these kind of things. Thoughts evoke a feeling, right? You hear some sort of feeling arise out of some sort of thought, right? 
And so when we understand that in the journey of our lives, we're understanding that there's an indicator going on that really reveals our true intentions when we look at the feelings that may be out of alignment, not in harmony, not in unity with our thoughts. Because let me ask you this, when you go to prayer, what place do you begin? Where do your thoughts come from? Let's say you're going to prayer about your finances. Well, wait a minute, my finances, my finances are terrible. I, I'm in lack, I'm suffering. I, I, I got all kinds of bills to pay and I don't have enough money. So where do you begin the prayer? Ah, you begin the prayer from the feeling of lack, don't you? When you're sick, you say, ah, oh, I'm so sick and I've got to pray. I've got to pray for, please pray for me. I'm just so, 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 so sick. Where's your feelings of health? Where are they coming from? A sense of sickness. Lack of wholeness. You're beginning every one of your prayers from these feelings, from this status, from this place. It says, wait a minute. I like to say, I believe that God is going to do some work, but oh, I'm so sick. Oh, I believe God's going to bless, but oh, I'm so poor. Oh, I believe that I could be successful, but I am such a failure. Oh, I wish I had loving relationships and I'm believing for loving relationships, but mine are the pits, you might say. You see, what happens is then our Thought is one way and our feeling is another way. And we are like this in life. And there's disharmony. It's not in unity. It's not a sense of oneness. So when we go to pray, what position are we coming from? Is it a position of lack or a position of knowing, having, and a feeling of knowing and having? As a man or woman thinks in his or her heart, so she is. It says in Proverbs 23, 7, as you think, what are your thoughts in your heart, your place of feeling? So when you think and you feel, it really speaks about where you are in life. And when you think, oh, I serve a God of abundance, but I feel really poor. I serve a God who's a healer, but I'm sicker than all get out. I feel like uh, God is desire for my life is prosperity, but I'm failing at everything I do. I feel like a failure. I think God intends for me to have loving relationships with this world, and I know that I'm going to love one another, but I don't feel loved, and I don't love myself. You see what I'm saying? Over and over again, we find ourselves that as you think and as you feel, the scripture is unfolding for us this truth. That's what you are. You're a divided, dissonant, disharmonious being, pulled, tortured, pulled one way, pulled another way. And wouldn't it be great if you just lived on the same page? You wrote your thoughts and your feelings, and they came together on the same page in a sense of oneness of belief. Because the way you feel influences what you are attracting. The way you feel will influence what you're attracting. This is the whole essence of prayer. This is the whole essence of faith. This is how it works. Because when we feel it within our heart, that's our sense of expression. We may know it within our mind, but it has to be felt within. Scripture says, if you can believe all things are possible, then to the one who believes. From Mark chapter 9, 23, if you can believe. And that believing is the knowing and the feeling, the very sense of understanding and the emotion centered around it that comes into oneness. Then all things are possible. But for many of us, we struggle and it's, we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and we wonder why there's not an answer to the prayer. Because we can't pray, God, I know you're a God of blessing and then feel the sense of lack. Feel the sense of poverty and feel the sense of, I just don't have enough. I can't. It's not possible. How many times have we said, oh, I feel inspired to do something wonderful, something charitable and generous. I would love to do it. I feel it. I just feel it. I feel it. But, oh, I look at my checkbook and say, no, no, no. And then that feeling just instantly went out the door. And you say, I got to be realistic. I have nothing. And so we live from that perspective, thought and feeling not matching. We have to get in touch with our feelings and ask ourselves, why am I feeling this? Why am I feeling this way? Why is this emotion here? Because if I know and understand the very promises of God, 
Why would I feel otherwise? Interesting. The beautiful story of the children of Israel and their liberation from bondage and slavery in Egypt. Moving on out to a promised land. I love that word, promised. I love that word, promised. Now, they knew, they heard this. This is the land that God has promised to you. This is the land that God has promised to you. Wow, I know that God has promised it, right? So they move on out. They travel and they come to the borders of this wonderful promised land, knowing its promise. And they send some spies in to check it out. Twelve spies go in and they look and they check everything out. And we know the story over and over again. It's the story of those coming back and saying, wow, did we see some fabulous stuff in the promised land. Milk and honey. We cut down some grapes. So look at this vine that we brought back full of a bounty, a blessing, of harvest, of grapes that were just luscious and wonderful. Look with the possibilities in this promised land. Isn't this amazing? And then 10 people spoke up. 10 of the 12 spies, we said, but you got to come to the reality here, honey. There's monsters there. There's big, there's giants. There's problems there. There's, they'll overtake us. They're going to destroy us. They're going to eat us up. They're going to make our lives miserable. There's no way we can go into this land. It's not possible. I'm terrified. I'm scared. I'm frightened. It is not going to work. We're not doing it. And what happened? They didn't do it. Because they allowed that emotion and feeling to take them a different direction from the knowing that it was promised. Wait a minute, it was promised. What's promised is given, right? It was promised, and you think, well, it's a promised land, then why are your feelings not matching with that which is promised? If it's promised to you, then you should know it's a given, and no matter what obstacles you're going to face, it's still promised to you, and it's going to be there for you, right? You ever have a promise ring given to you? Or knew of somebody who gave a promise ring? They made a promise, a commitment, right? To follow through and they give you this promise ring to say here's my ring that signifies my promise that I agree to fulfill this promise how beautiful that is so God offered a promise yet everyone's feelings from the children of Israel was we don't care about that promise we don't believe in that promise anymore we don't trust in that promise we don't stand on that promise we don't allow that promise to have its fulfillment because we're our emotions are fear-based, our emotions are stress-based, our emotions are saying, we can't see how and when this is all going to come together, it's so, so difficult, and so we're just going to quit. And they gave up on the opportunity of a promised blessing. See, this is why it's so important we get in touch with why we feel the way we do when there's already a promise. You know, the Bible is full of all kinds of wonderful promises for your life. Promises for your blessing, promises of your prosperity, promise for health and wholeness, promises of healing, promises of uh, great success for your life, promises, oh, we could go over and over again. The Bible is full of all these wonderful proclamations where God is saying, this is how I see your life, full of blessing. This is how I created you to live. This is how I intend for you to be, enjoy this experience on this earth. There's promises. But if our emotions don't match with that, all those promises become null and void. We dismiss them and we say, God, I, I, know, I, I know you promised to take me through this. I, I know you promised to make me a success. I know you, I, I don't feel it. And I'm scared and I'm frightened. And I'm, so I'm going to give into my feelings and forego the promise. I'm going to live torn between knowing and receiving a promise and living an emotion that's in contrary. Now we find a beautiful example of the story of the Roman centurion who came to Jesus and said, my beloved boy is sick. Jesus, all you have to do is say the word. You don't even need to come to my house. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to leave this moment where you are. You just say the healing word, and I know my son will be healed. I know this beloved boy will experience a dynamic heat. He's not here. He's not in this room. He's not with us. 
But I know your power. I know your the wonderful work of God within you, flowing through you. I know your ability. I know you are a healer. All you have to do is say the word, and I know it's done. And Jesus said, whoa, 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 whoa. I've never seen faith like this in all of Israel. A Roman centurion coming and just saying, this is my knowing, married to my feeling. We're both on the same page. We both know and feel my intellect and my emotions, how I feel about it and what I know about it. It's one. And in that sense of unity, in that dynamic expression, he expressed the greatest element of faith or greatest demonstration of faith that the world could ever see. Now, that's the life where we're called to live, where we stand on the promises and we feel the joy of those promises. We don't let circumstances deflect or remove or deter or take us away from the joy of feeling good about God's promises. So what happens is the way we feel is our true message to this universe, and it's what attracts like a magnet to our lives. It's the law of attraction at work. What happens is when we start believing something to really be true, we attract it to us. But the universe is looking to say, I know you said this, but you're feeling that. I don't know how to respond. God is saying, I know you're said, you're clan standing on the promises, but everything about your emotions and feelings say, I ain't standing on nothing of God. I'm thinking sand here. I have given up on this. I have no intention. So the universe says, I don't know what to give you. For likes attract likes is a very spiritual concept that we know this to be true within our whole lives, that that which we believe we will attract and draw to our lives, but it has to be a fervent, passionate, definite, confirmed, united belief. How important that is within our lives. Whereas quite often many of us, we think we're speaking faith, yet we're feeling doubt. We're thinking that we're speaking faith, but we're really feeling doubts within our lives. We like to say these nice words, but deep inside the heart, there's like, mm -mm, it ain't going to happen for me. So it's imperative that we change our direction so that our thoughts and our feelings are in alignment, that we transform this feeling of lack and negativity and address that emotion so it matches that which the promise that we know and we hold in mind. And how do we do this? By speaking the name of God. I'm not saying, oh God, oh God, oh God, that we need to go around calling out that. I'm saying we speak the name of God, which is, I am. I am. Do we all recognize that? For when Moses was asked, asked of the burning bush, in what authority, in what power, in what strength and in whose name do I go forward to the Pharaoh to ask for the release of the children of Israel? You go in the authority of I am that I am. The I am is the very name of God. And so suddenly what happens? We transform our thought and our feeling in its divisiveness going off in different directions. And we pivot, we bring it all together. We pull everything into sense of oneness by saying, I am whole. I am healed. I am prosperous. I am, meaning the God within me is prosperous. The I am is whole. The God within me is complete. The God within me is healthy, wise, and wealthy. All those wonderful attributes that I discovered, I am. Scripture says in the Old Testament, and now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am uh, blessed. Let the, each one say in the proclamation, I am blessed. I am rich. Let the, those who are sick say, I am whole. All of this wonderful context is there to unfold for us when we understand that what we're doing when we profess I am, we're creating harmony. We're pulling it all together. And we start to feel from the I am. I am whole. I am whole. I am whole. Start saying the name of God. I am. I am. I am whole. I am complete. I am blessed. I am strong. I am healthy. I am well. I am wise. I am. I am. I am. I am. 
And that's when we begin to proclaim the very name of God at work within our lives. And let me tell you, when you use the name of God in vain, it's not saying, oh, God. Because God is not God's name. God is what God does or is. God's name is I am. And when you use the name I am in vain, it's I'm stupid. I'm dumb. I'm unable. I'm sick. I can't. I am poor. I am broke. I am nothing. And you're using the name of God in vain every time you address God, the Almighty, the I am, in that way. So it's a call for us when we're pulling everything together, we're creating harmony within our lives, we're getting everything on the same page. It begins with the creating of this wonderful I am feeling within us, and you create this harmony that draws everything into your experience. Because you know how it is. How many of you have said, I, I'm not going to fall. I'm not going to fall. I'm not going to fall. Any fall. <laughs> you know, you kind of profess it over and over again because you've been saying the negative over and over too many times. And now it's time to say the positive and allow just as the negative that you proclaim transpired, the positive now transpires in your life. And when you think of perfect health from the positive, you begin to feel that positive energy of peace and joy and you create harmony. Because it's not possible to feel a negative emotion and at the same time create harmony with something that you want. It's not possible. I want blessing. And it's not possible then if you're in disharmony, you can't create that. You can't attract it. Because the universe goes, uh-uh, I don't believe you. And you don't believe it either. Because it says, to them that believe, but you got to believe. And the universe says, I can see that you're not believing. I know when you believe. You can't pull the wool over the universe's eye. You can't pull the wool over God's eye. You can't pull the wool over anything that is of the divine, of this wonderful creative power that is infinite possibilities. You can't fake it. God knows. And when you're saying, I want this, but I feel that you're in conflict, it's not possible for it to unfold for you. We often always then live a life where we're attracting what we don't want. And that's the disharmony. We want to now start attracting what we do want by removing then these negative feelings and emotions. When we start feeling that we already possess it is the key. That's right. Feel as if you already possess it. Why? Because God has already given it to you. It's just you don't realize it's already there. That's right. Do you think God is withholding your healing from you? No. What's withholding the healing from you is your awareness that your healing is already there. Do you think God is withholding your prosperity, saying, Carla, I just love to see you suffer. I want to see you struggle. I want to see you financially broke. I just find pleasure and joy in seeing that. Let's see how she works it out. Let's just say she's got a zero balance in her bank account, and we're going to send her a couple of bills. Ha <laughs> Let's just see how Carla enjoys that. Do we think that's God? No, we know that's not God. God is not withholding a single thing from us. God has already given Carla all the blessing. It's ready for her to receive. Where, where, where? Honey, don't worry about where. Because God knows the where. God knows the how. That's God's job, not yours. Okay? Allow the universe to do its work within you. You just engage and the knowing and the feeling that God has already created everything that I need, all that I desire, God knows before I even ask. Wow, that's a big understanding for us to grasp. What happens then is then when we create this feeling that we already have it, we possess it, we live from that perspective. I am healthy. I am joyful. I am amazing. And we need to say that over again. So let's speak the word name of God together with the I am and add amazing right now. Say it with me. I am amazing. Wow. The God within you is amazing is what you just said. And that God within you is at work within you. Now, if you believe it and you feel it, well, then it's harmonious. It's beautiful. It's now creating the harmony that we so desire. You know what creating harmony is? It's the process where 
you become the shepherd of those stray sheep. You become the shepherd where you round up all that renegade net energy that's out there. I'm going to round them up. Come on, get in the crowd. Get in the crowd. These negative thoughts that are out there. I'm going to round you up and I'm going to see that you're corralled because what I'm doing is now I'm creating harmony against these energies, these thoughts, these emotions, these feelings that now want to work in conflict and contrary to that which I desire. And it's getting them now to move in the direction you want. Get your thoughts. Get your feelings. All we like sheep have gone astray. You heard that passage of scripture. Sheep being those indicative of those thoughts. All of our thoughts go astray. Right now here in this room, I'm sure your thoughts have gone astray. Mm, what do I smell? Dinner. What's going on? What would be lunch? Mm, you know, what's going on outside? Was that a bird out the window? Where'd they go? Yeah, I know all your thoughts have gone astray somewhere along this time. The few three minutes I've been talking. Oh, uh, a little bit more than that. Uh, yeah. So you know, all right? Your thoughts have gone astray. We're like sheep. A shepherd, we've got to bring them back into the fold and send them in the direction that they need to go. That's what creating this harmony is all about. So creating harmony is making a change in the direction of your creating or attracting so that what you bring in is a sense of complete harmony. You are creators. You're not gatherers of things or relationships or regurgitators of experiences lived out by others. No, you are here deliberately, deliberately to apply these universal laws, these promises, promises, promises that God has laid out already for you. I've already promised it to you. Now, are you going to couple it with the emotion of joy and a feeling, feeling that says, I already have the promise of God. I already have it. It's already mine. You see, that's being the creator of creating a harmony in our world. We're here to enjoy this deliciousness of, of creating and creating through this sense of everything being on the same page in our own individual life, thought and feeling together, united. So today is your day to align all the notes of your life into a harmonious sound of great success to live and create. Amen. Amen.